Here's my package from DigiKey. It's light as a feather. It's a fairly large package. So here's the uh, CTS MP101s that were specified for use at 10 megahertz. It's interesting to note that they're uh, specified as 36 picofarad fastens. There's no prices here, but these were 10 for $7.50. Here are the 5 megahertz crystals that it turns out I already had in stock. They were $7.50 for 10. Interestingly, these ITT crystals that I used in the last video are rated 18 picofarads. Here's the MP101s, which I'll proceed to install. I did find one other YouTube fellow, uh, Aaron Parks. There's a link to it. That link is also listed in the uh, link below. This is also a 10 megahertz receiver. Got some discrete parts here ahead of the filters. Interestingly enough, these are MP101s also. So he uses five filters in his receiver. And the one I'm building uses four, two before the op amp and two after the op amp. Following the filter, Aaron has some more gain stages and then an output to the oscilloscope. I found this channel, I think it goes by this, is the name of his channel. Very, very interesting. Here's the, the bandwidth with the MP101 crystals installed. The peak is not quite at 10 megahertz. The, the uh, indicator is at 10. The peak is 10.000. One three. But this is ten right here. And the gain is a little less than forty decibels. Actually it's a little more than forty decibels. According to this the output is forty-four decibels. It's about 7 o'clock here in Pennsylvania, and here in the background, it's a very noisy WWV signal on 10 megahertz. So that's a WWV signal at 10 megahertz. So this is the output of the amplifier. If I disconnect the input, I lose it. Now I can't put the amplifier into oscillation. Well, I think I can. There we go. I'm holding a screwdriver across the two toroids. Doesn't do it all the time, but see that? And of course, it's oscillating at 10 megahertz. I'll put the antenna back on. And there we have what I think is the 10 megahertz. Getting my fingers in. I get my fingers near the transformers, it breaks into oscillation. 
The problem is my only 10 megahertz source that I want to compare with this is leaky enough that the amplifier picks up the local 10 megahertz reference. Now, I have the antenna and the ball and here on my desk. I'm going to have to hook up a remote antenna and bring it in through coax. I'm, I'm assuming this jumping around is residual modulation that's left on the signal. Next thing I did was complete these two preamplifiers, or as I like to call them, amplifiers or post amplifiers. There was nothing unexpected except I did have to drill some holes. That one and the tube for this capacitor had not been drilled. And that would explain why the resistor is mounted semi-hairpin. So I'll put both amplifiers back on the spec analyzer with and without this preamp. Post amp, whatever. All right, here we are with the 10 megahertz amplifier. Uh, minus 80 dB in. Okay, so there's the gain at 10 megahertz without the preamp. And with the preamp, it's minus 20 dBm output. So that gives us a total of 80 dB gain with the system hooked up at 10 megahertz. Here is the 5 megahertz receiver. Uh, minus 80 dB input and we have a minus 41 dB output. The marker is again at 5 megahertz. I'll introduce the amplifier into the circuit and here's the response curve with the amplifier. The gain is now, the output that is, is now minus 16 0.8 dB. After seeing the 10 megahertz receiver actually work, I'm going to end this part and I'm going to, I've got a couple things to do. First I want to enclose the four different circuit boards in RF tight enclosures. Then I'm going to try a improved antenna in the hopes of getting a better at least 10 megahertz uh, signal in this area. I've got some piston trimmers. I think they're 2 to 10, 2 to 40 picofarads. C1 and C3 will shift the bandpass and perhaps level it. Uh, currently they are 36 picofarad, uh, these two, C1 and C4. And they, they appear to be determining the bandpass and the bandpass shape. I may try looking at whether this pistons can shift the bandpass back and forth. For the 5 megahertz, the uh, two capacitors I'm going to play with are 33 picofarad now. The most important thing I can do is improve my antenna. Um, Don Kirk, who is a commenter now on this series, I think Section 8 is maybe California, somewhere in the West Coast. So I think he gets a much better 10 megahertz signal than I do in W3 land. And the only way that can be changed is for me to get a better antenna. I get one of the neighborhood boys to help me see if I can come up with a new antenna. I'll do the next part whenever I get these things enclosed and get a better antenna. If you have enjoyed this at all, subscribe and or give me a th thumbs up. Thank you.